Reb David Kimchi, the Radak, a very early commentator to the Chumash and Navi, lived about a hundred years after Rashi, also in France. He approached the text with a very different skill set to that of Rashi. He was primarily a grammarian. He focused on issues of language and form, as well as content. His peerish includes homiletic and philosophical material, hashkafa, nikud, midrashi content, and at times he also focuses upon the meaning of the words. With respect to Yehuda's demand that Hutsiyuha v'tesaref, he writes that in the days of Yehuda there was a form of what was later to become known as Yivum, Leverite marriage, and suggests that the marital status of a Shomeret Yavam, a woman awaiting marriage to the surviving brother was that of an Eshet Ish. She had the status of a woman not available to the public at large for marriage. And therefore, Vahayodanin Dina Lisrefa Imla Tizka, if she entered into a relationship that violated tribal custom with respect to adultery, the Shomeret Yavam would be treated as an adulteress. However, the Redux suggests that at the time, tribal custom had it that with respect to a father-in-law, Lo Haita Asura, he also had the right and the possibly the obligation to protect the widow. There was no prohibition against him marrying her, Im Yiritzahu, should he so desire. This is the approach of the Redak, as he weaves his way through on the one hand, Yehuda's demand that she should be executed, and then upon his discovery as to who she was, removes that threat to her life. As noted, the Radak is not bound by the restrictions of the Pshuta Shel Mikra, and as we shall demonstrate from the standpoint of the Pshuta Shel Mikra, that Tamar, at the time of her intimacy with Yehuda, was not a Shomeret Yavam, and therefore could not be judged as an Eshet Ish, and for this reason Rashi struggles to justify Yehuda's demand to Hotsiyuha V'tesaref. To justify this assertion regarding Tamar, we will need to return back to Bereshit 38.11, where we are told that upon the death of the second son, Yehuda comes to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, and suggests, Shvi almana beit avich, live out your status as a widow in your father's home, in other words, return back to your family, ad yigdal sheila b'ni, until sheila, Yehuda's third son will grow into maturity. And the Pasuk then goes on to provide a reason, ostensibly for not marrying Sheila, Ki Amar, because he, Yehuda said, Pen Yamut, Gamhu Ka'achiv, lest also he will suffer the same fate as his brothers, that he would die. Vatelek Tamar, Tamar went, Vatesheb Beit Aviha, and resettled herself, remained in her father's home. The most problematic aspect of this pasuk is the reason that Yehuda offered for Tamar's returning back to her home, that it would avert the risk of Yehuda's third son also dying. The question is, why did Yehuda feel that Shela's life was at risk? Which is a valid Pshuta Shel Mikra question that Rashi addresses. Drawing from the Bereshit Rabbah, he writes, Muchzeket he there is a chazaka, it has already been established regarding Zo, Tamar, Shiamutu Anasheha, that her husbands would die. In a very primitive society mindset, it would be reasonable to conclude that for some mysterious reason, Tamar was the cause for the deaths of both Er and Onan. And for this reason, Yehuda had asked Tamar to return back to her family home. This, however, creates a secondary flow-on problem, that if Yehuda suspected that Tamar was the cause of the deaths of both Aaron and Onan, why did he tell her to return back to her family home, Ad Yigdal Sheila Bni, until son number three, Sheila, would grow up? If, in his mind, Tamar was the cause for the deaths of both Aaron and Onan, Sheila would be at risk, whether or not they waited until he was ready to marry her. And to forewarn this problem, Rashi had written that Docha Hayabata Bekash, he would push her away. Note the present tense format with a straw. In other words, he would find a pretext to brush aside her request. 
שלא היו בדעת אפו. From the very outset he did not intend להסיעה לא. To have her, Tamar, marry Sheila at all. And therefore, the supposed reason of Penyamut Gamhu Ke'achiv is not an explanation as to why she should wait until Sheila would grow up, because from the standpoint of Rashi's reading the text, Yehuda never intended that she should marry Sheila, but rather it modifies and explains the reason as to why he had Tamar leave his home and return permanently back to her father's home. In other words, leaving his jurisdiction. This understanding of the text is reflected in the translation of the Gutnik Chumash. Shvi almana beit avich ad yigdal shela bani, stay as a widow in your father's house until my son Shela grows up. And here the translator, based upon Rashi, inserts the following, that whenever she asked about Shela, he pushed her off. In other words, refused to allow Shela to marry her because he said to himself, not to her, as the text might suggest, it is possible that he will die, as did his brothers. And the narrator informs us that, Vatelech Tamar, Vateshev Beit Avich, Tamar returned and remained in her father's house. This, of course, is a very different scenario to the one proposed by the Radak, but, as mentioned earlier, Radak is not bound by the restrictions of the Pshuta Shomikra.